I've got to see this one in person. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Everyone say thank you, William, for another Fender Friday. He decided to new guitar day the new Amethyst finish. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had a feeling stock photos weren't really going to do this color justice, and I had no idea what to expect. At many angles, it's like this really deep, almost magenta purple, and then you get kind of that rainbow sparkly effect, but this thing is highly active. Wow. All right, I can see why Fender enthusiasts are losing their minds over this color. That's sweet. But this is part of Fender's 70th anniversary collection here. So a couple of weeks ago, they came out with a few different new models to celebrate the Strat coming out in 54, and it's now 2024. My two favorites are the one we're reviewing today, and then the Ventera 2 Antigua Stratocaster. If anybody wants to new guitar day one of those, I would be thrilled. This particular one is based on a Fender Strat Ultra. Now we reviewed one of those when they first came out in that cool Texas tea color, and I thought that one was pretty sweet looking. This is a fairly modern Stratocaster, but remember, there's still a step above this called the Ultra Lux. That's when you get the stainless steel frets. But this one, it's got that whole swoop on the back. It's got the asymmetrical heel carve. They were kind of a big deal when they were first launched. Well, what's really cool about this one is we have a roasted maple neck, but they apply a oil finish to it. So it's not exactly the same as many of their satin finishes. It feels pretty good. It's very slick and fast. But then you might also notice our pickup setup. That's something that they changed for this model. You have a new 70th anniversary special noiseless pickup. And instead of a double tap humbucker, it's a quadra tap <laughs> things are getting a little bit crazy here but apparently we're supposed to have two different s1 switches right here that give us a hot mode as well as a coil splitter so we'll have to see how that sounds on a stratocaster but man this gives me like silver surfer joe satriani type vibes i mean this thing changes colors at all angles with all these carvings on it these are being offered brand new for about a $250 premium over the regular Strat Ultras. So that puts you at $2,500, whereas the other ones are $2,250. And we've got some other fancy specs that we'll talk about on the workbench, but you know, first impressions, I think it lives up to the expectations. But for that price, you get the guitar. We already saw our cool limited edition case. It's got that whole black and white cloth exterior. Now let's check out our case compartment. Case keys and silica packets. Oh, this is interesting. The 70th anniversary sticker. Maybe they put them on there for dealers to put on because usually you see them just stock from the factory like right here-ish. But we also have a basic Fender COA paper and our owner's manual. Bonus Fender sticker with our vibrato arm and some Allen keys and the Schaller strap lock counterparts. Because yes, this guitar actually comes stock with that. Now, when I first reviewed the Strat Ultra, ultimately I wasn't a fan of the pickup, so we'll have to see if this new set sounds any better. But let's go ahead and throw this one onto the workbench to take an individual look at all of its nitty gritty parts and details before we get to that playing sample. Time to get started. I was not prepared for what I was going to see underneath this pick guard. <laughs> the electronics are quite vast. I mean, look at all this wiring. This thing weighs a ton. Nearly one and a half pounds just thrown onto that pick guard. Here's what this guitar weighs all put together. It's about eight and a half pounds. And I thought that was kind of heavy feeling for a Stratocaster, but... Now we know why. But first, let's take a look at the body. If you wanted to modify one, you've got a humbucker route in the neck and bridge position with just the single coil in the middle. Here you can read our tags that come stock from the factory with their little barcodes. That one's a little smushed up. Shows this one was completed 223 of 2024. Pretty nice routes overall. This is supposed to be an alder body. However, I don't see any bare areas where we could verify that. Except for maybe in our screw holes. Now let's dive into this. Are they lying about these new single coils? It's been too long since I've seen them. I do see it says 70, but it almost looks handwritten to me. It reads Ultra Strat Vintage in both locations. Then look at that. You can just barely see that it says a Quadra Tap. Holy cow, we got a whole bunch of rainbow wires coming from that thing, including a silver ground wire. And then it comes into this sheathed wire, and then it goes up and around then eventually splits out again here to get soldered into your S1 switches. But then you just have a regular CTS tone pot. 
So that's what a current S1 switch looks like. It's very similar to a push-pull pot, except for instead of pulling up and pushing down, you just have a button here. It's kind of cool because it's invisible. You have to know to look for it. However, one thing I will mention, not that I think this will matter for most people, but the S1 knobs, they turn so effortlessly and smooth. They're very fast. Then you come over to your tone, and it's that same, you know, slightly resistant moving one. I mean, this is the same force. So if you're used to a knob that kind of has a little bit of resistance to it, that'll take a little bit to get used to. From the outside, reads Fender Noiseless on both of those. And if you're not familiar with what a noiseless pickup is, they basically just stack two stingle coils together to cancel out the 60 cycle hum. And humbuckers are exactly like that, but two coils stacked on this side of each other. Here's the inside of the output jack cavity. I guess maybe you can just barely see through to the alder there, but not enough to really see much. Now that we've seen the electronics, let's see how they're going to behave within the circuit. So we get 9.56k ohms. That's pretty hot for a humbucker. Then that middle single coil, that reads a lot higher, but remember, it's basically two pickups stacked on each other. That's why the resistance reading is so high. It's not actually going to sound the way that these things are making it look. That's the neck. And then obviously, you can get your in-between positions, 4.29. Then these two together, 4.61. As far as the bridge goes, it's your modern two-point synchronized tremolo. Let's take another second to appreciate this finish. It's a very color rainbow changey, if that's what you like. But moving on from there, we've got that roasted maple neck and fretboard. They are one and the same. It is not a board put on top of a neck. Got 22 medium jumbo frets, and I just want to say, Fender, you're doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Those are nice and shiny right out of the box. I've been disappointed with quite a few of the guitars that I've been demoing that are brand new out of the box, as far as the shininess of the frets that I know that they could be. These are not just regular black dots, they're actually black perloid. I was playing my sandblasted strat a couple of days ago as I was moving things around, and I've come to really appreciate that feature. It just gives you something a little bit more for you that the audience doesn't necessarily see while you're playing your guitar. But it's still a 25 and a half inch scale length featuring a compound fretboard radius starting at 10 transitioning to 14 inches by the end of the board we get a bone nut measuring 1.68 inches to 2.05 at the 12. the advertised modern d shaped neck measures 0.83 at the first fret neck depth and wow quite skinny 0.88 by the 12th as the d shaped neck implies you don't have a lot of shoulder to it it tapers off rather quickly it's a rather thin neck but it's very fast with that oil finish they say they just use a regular urethane satin for the headstock. Now, if you didn't know that the finishes were different by reading the spec sheet, I'm not sure you would feel it, but the back of the neck is really fast feeling, like your hand just glides on it. I'm a big fan of that. Whereas this has a little bit of tackiness to it. The Fender logo is metallic gold color. Got a modern string tree, and we do still have a cap of walnut up here. It's just the wood colors look very similar. And these are locking tuners, but we'll see that on the backside here in a second. Moving on to the backside now, got that back plate off. That's how Fender's leaving them out of the factory, three springs. And you've got your regular comfort cut, but it's right here. If you haven't seen one of these Ultra Strats yet, this is how it's different. The whole body slopes in right there, and then they have this additional cutaway. So as you're coming up here, instead of hitting the body, it's been sculpted just a little bit more to get out of your way. I don't really play up here, so I have to ask another player if they appreciate that, but I would imagine they would. Here's a better look at that neck plate. It says 70th anniversary Stratocaster, all those good years, and your serial number. It's a four bolt neck, and it is slightly askew. You've got your Schaller strap lock up here, and at the bottom. So far, the only downside to that oil finish that they're doing here, there's like some uneven coloring within the wood, or maybe it's just it doesn't color the wood very much. I know it's quite common for color differences within the wood, it's just this walnut looks really light in comparison to how it usually is on a fender. That roasted maple neck is looking quite nice. You even have like, I don't know if that's flame figuring right there, that's just not really brought out because we don't have the gloss finish, but it's something. They just have nice ringy wood crane all along the neck. Even if you don't care about the color over here, feel one of these necks out of stored. It's nice. But here's the backside with those locking tuners. You can see the locking mechanisms right there. All said and done, here's the weight again. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds.
So the S1 switches only affect our humbucker. So here it is, just itself. Split. Now it's the hot mode. Now hot and split. Gotta say, I'm a fan of the hot humbucker. Not really a fan of the split. Sounds okay when it's blended. Now let's take it back to full humbucker. Now see when it's hot. Both. Yeah, that's interesting. Definitely prefer that in single coil when blending these two. Otherwise, I think I would just leave that off and stick with your hot tone. But this is a really nice dark tone. Let's see how it distorts. noiseless pickups that I've tried from Fender didn't seem to get it right. Now granted, I only tried them like a couple of times, but the Ultra Series when it first came out wasn't my favorite for the noiseless pickups. I think these actually sound quite convincing and good. <laughs> I'm a fan of this quadra tap when it's on that hot mode. That's a great sounding humbucker. I imagine that would be a huge asset for a Stratocaster player if you need something more Gibson territory. So there you have it, the new Amethyst Ultra Stratocaster. What are my final thoughts? 
I liked this finish in the photos and it was really cool seeing it in person and seeing how it color shifts and all this other good stuff. But ultimately, I think it's a little bit too much of a color shift in my opinion. It's not something that I would personally want to own. I'm more of a boring Antigua kind of guy. However, I totally understand why people would enjoy this. But I've got to say, huge fan of whatever they did to these noiseless pickups. They sound really good or maybe it's just my mood today. It's hard to tell. And that humbucker, fantastic. So this is like one of the better modern but yet vintage sounding strats I've had in a while. For me, I was kind of hoping for a chunkier neck, but you don't find that as often on a Stratocaster. But hey, they have specced this out for the modern player. I'm sure somebody a little bit more gifted in the playing division might enjoy some of these other amenities that we talked about. So I hope you enjoyed checking out this viewer's new guitar. Thank you for sharing it with us, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.